I believe in a Pilsner. Pilsners are made of my fortune, and I brewed my Pilsner in the American fashion. But I brewed it and never to dishonor its family. The Bud Miller Coors bars come by. They brew it like lager. They put the corn in it. They put the rice in it. They call it a triple hopper Pilsner. I do not protest. Then the American craft brewers come along. They put too much hops in it. They try to make it a hazy. But the Pilsner resisted. It kept its honor. And so they put a lactose in it. Like an animal. I wept. Why did I weep? Pilsner was the light of my life. A beautiful beer. <laughs> now it'll never be beautiful again. <laughs> Sorry. So I go to the BJCP, like a good American brewer. These are brewers, they are about a competition. What do they get? Remedial brewing a classic styles. Suspended sentence. Suspended sentence? I stood in the courtroom looking like a fool. And these are brewers. They smiled at me. That's when I said to my wife, for justice, we must go to Don Chad Leon. What did you say? Say I was a playing the Mario. Mamma mia! Italian Pilsner is a style that's kind of in vogue these days, if you will. There's really not much different between an Italian Pilsner and a delicious German Pilsner, except Italian Pilsner has a little bit more emphasis on the noble hop aroma, noble hop flavors. You'll often want to use your traditional noble hops, or maybe if you're going a little bit new school, just sort of like the newer noble hops. Some of the new things coming out of Germany or that are like hybrids of the classic, mm. you know, Saws or Hallertau middle fruit hops. Mm. Or if you're a cool guy, Laurel. Well, that is kind of one of the new hybrid hops. So with this one, we used Laurel. So I think, can you say Laurel? 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 <laughs> How's the gabagool? As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a brewer. To me, being a brewer was better than being president of the United States. Even before I first wandered into Ferment Station, I knew I wanted to be part of the beer scene. Turns out it was in my blood. My mom's side of the family came over from Italy. My great-grandpa Luigi worked at the Peels Brewery in Brooklyn. 
I thought, awesome, I'm a second generation brewer. Time to go brew an Italian pilsner. Come to find out, Grandpa Louie wasn't a brewer. He actually worked on the plumbing of the brewery. Yeah, yeah, his name was Luigi and he was a plumber. You think that's funny? Funny how? What's funny about it? The style of an Italian pilsner is a fairly recent invention. Back in 96, Agostino Arioli from Birrificio Italiano attempted to brew a northern German style pilsner. Unsatisfied with the final result, he dry hopped it with tetanang in a cask and named it Tipo Pils, which means kind of pills. Cut to Matt Brindelson of California's Firestone Walker, overseas for a beer comp. Inspired by the flavor of Tipo Pills and Augustino's enthusiasm, he created Pivo Pills back at Firestone, dry hopped with Saphir hops. And that's when the style really picked up here in the States. The key to brewing an Italian Pilsner, like any Pilsner, is balance. You want bright floral aromatics, but not as pungent as an IPA. Noble hops are newer super noble breeds. No sea hops for you here. You just want the right bitterness, the right balance between hops and malt, and that little hint of sulfur from lager yeast. You can't hide your flaws like you might in an IPA, but if you can nail this style, you're probably a pretty damn good brewer. People look at you differently. They know you're somebody. Now are we on that level yet? I don't know, you tell me. Some days Chad's kids grab us a beer out of the fridge. You know why? It was out of respect. Yeah, Laurel, man. I had, I'd read about it and hadn't really had a ton of stuff with it. I was like, we should do a beer with Laurel on it. Why not do a Pilsner? So, here we are, riveting content. What's it called when people eat? What's the sound? What, ASMR? No. Oh, we're gonna have like a mukbang? This no, is an Italian a mukbang. There's a word for it, where like the sound of me chewing and you chewing. Good thing we don't have mics on. It uh, really, it really like misoph it. misophonia? Yes. For everybody with misophonia, there's a bunch of guys. Oh, the guy by the ghoul. My hands are so greasy. Mm. That's how I live my life. You just eat this and then fix your hair in the morning? Yeah. That's how I, I save on beard oil and hair gel. It's like slide some gabagool grease and I got I got some olive oil. It's like grease it all up. Wow. And all of his works. I do renounce them. And all of his pops. I do renounce them. Chadwick, will you be baptized? I 
Bravo. Shadowic Bruges, go in peace, and may the Lord be with you. Amen. We fermented it with plenty of Saflager 3470 yeast, then dry hopped it with another couple ounces of laurel. We bottled it then lagered it for another couple months before really cracking any open. Problem is, we didn't film this video till almost a year after brew day, and you know what happens when you got a couple cases of pilsners hanging around during the summer months. Good thing I had stashed away a few bottles of my own, otherwise we'd be back to one and a half pints homebrew. That's just how it works. You get out of line, you get whacked. Everybody knows the rules. Woke up on over, grabbed yourself a beer Time to film the review, it's only been a year Said fan of business, you always got a can Made bad decisions with the blue moon in your hand When you woke up this morning, and all that pills is gone Zippler, do you saved, review after this song Need to finish this video and other ones you plan. Stayed up all night with the blue moon in your hand. Say it. Woke up this morning, it's lagered crystal clear. Woke up hungover, grab yourself a beer. Woke up hungover, grab yourself a beer. Grab yourself a beer. Grab yourself a beer. Grab yourself a beer Oh my god Hey, you poured a clear one Man, oh man So this is what happens when you let your uh, Pilsner set for about a year Nope, this was <laughs> intentional it was like this from day one. We just did a really good job. Salute. Salute. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful color. Just absolutely gorgeous. Wow, this beer's good. So this has been sitting for a while, but you still have got that noble hop aroma, kind of uh, floral lemon coming through still. It was really strong, obviously, when we first bottled it. Maybe too strong, so we let it lager for at least, a, like, two or three months before we really got into it. Problem with success is, everybody wants a piece of the pie. If you're part of a brew crew, nobody ever tells you that they're gonna kill you. Doesn't happen that way. There weren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. See, your murderers come with smiles. They come as your friends. The come as people you've cared for your whole life. Just the way it drinks, it's just like so crisp and pilsnery. You got like that cracker crumb, like saltine, pilsner malt, and just this beautiful, delicate hop flavor. It's definitely kind of uh, tempered down over, <laughs> over the year that we made this, but 
It is still super forward. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. So, I think that as far as recommendations, I would definitely do it again. Would I incorporate this into um, other beer styles? Definitely. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to our amazing bottling process. <laughs> this has lasted a year in bottles. We're like, it. It's called purging your bottles headspace, okay? <laughs> Just purge your bottles headspace. Felt really good. I'm feeling very self-conscious about how I kept my spaghetti now. Only a non-Italian cuts the spaghetti. I'm not Italian. Also, don't like pasta. That well, I do. I enjoy a pesto pasta, predominantly. Um. Anyway, what I was gonna say about this is that sometimes I came up with an idea. I'm just like, hey Ben, we should do this. And then we do it. And it doesn't always turn out very well. This one turned out amazingly well. Just, it's delicate and a beautiful beer. It's the kind of beer that if we brewed it badly, definitely by now, all the flaws would show, but yeah. Yeah, uh, this is one of our better Pilsners. Probably our best, actually, so far. I would say, hands down, our best Pilsner so far. Until next time, <laughs> we're just gonna destroy this beer in every conceivable way. We, we spent a lot of time trying to come up with a name for this Pilsner. We're coming up with various puns based on uh, the movies and shows we're spoofing in this video. But we settled on Stregonon from the book by Tommy DePaul. We got Stregonon, which means Grandmother Witch, and our magic pasta pot, and all the things she had with the big Anthony. And this is one of our, this is my book that's been passed down to me and my siblings for, oh, sorry, seven years. Oh, God. Um, you read this as a child? Uh, <laughs> a few things. One, I wouldn't even say I read it. I devoured that as a child. <laughs> I don't know why, but um, I had a cassette tape of this that I would legitimately listen to while I was going to bed every night. It just seemed like between Ben's love for his Italian heritage and my love for <laughs> Strigonona. <laughs> like my weird love. I don't know. I it's a good it, book! It is a great book. So if you were evil, we're gonna kill. We, we, uh, we actually had it. I, I floated a dumb idea as a joke, not to actually do, but we're gonna go fill up the mash tun and then <laughs> make a lot of pasta in the mash tun, get the pasta out, and brew the Italian Pilsner in the pasta water, which... Somebody shot it down. Who shot it down? You did! Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Any of you folks out there, if you want to go brew a pasta beer, brew it and uh, let us know how it comes out in the comments. Also, don't. Also, do. <laughs> also, don't, don't listen to this idiot over here. Remember what you used to say. How many times can we say goodbye? Yeah. Uh, so, sorry, uh, the battery ran out. Oh. Okay. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs>
Sorry, I, I thought this video is actually going to be about them. Yeah, so this is a no longer an Italian Pilsner video. This is a a video about cured Italian meats. Oh, you may have well seen me in all your YouTube videos. Well, then spy on on you. I'm uh, struggling with the salted meats personally, but... <laughs> Can't stop me from my gabagool! I'm trying to aim one and a half pint home brewing, and my kid up here is Stephen Owen. Chad is full. Cannot eat any more food. It will be my YouTube channel now! Chad is like four inches taller than me. First, I start with this poisonous beer. You guys drink it. They're about larger person. <sighs> but I am uh, 225 pounds. Of Italian stallion, nobody can stop me and my mortadella. I'm gonna go. I was part of the, I was part of the cool guys, and they are secret evil. Mm. Ah. 230 pounds. <laughs> I, Ew. Ew. Oh, ah. Ah, I feel like so insanely bloated after eating the meat in the other session that I can't, I can't even like, <laughs> I'm having a hard time even being funny. <laughs> I just don't feel good. <laughs> like, how do you do this, man?